This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. It's dark and winter, and I think we could all use a little bit more light. So in today's video, I'm making this simple light fixture using low-powered LED fairy lights, some glass ornaments, and some cherry wood. If you never made a light before, but you're interested, then this project might be perfect. It involves some basic soldering, simple woodworking, and we're working with low power. I mean, this whole fixture is powered with a five volt cell phone charger. And all the products that I'm using will be linked in the description. So I picked up a pair of six fairy lights that came with a battery package containing two three volt lithium ion batteries. Now I needed to figure out how much power the lights needed to operate, six volts if powered in series or three volts if powered in parallel. So I confirmed they needed three volts. Now I wanted to use a five volt cell phone charger. So to reduce the power, I'm putting in a PWM dimmer made for DC motors. Okay, we got five volts coming in, three volts coming out. Sucky. Now the bulbs. So I needed to cap it off somehow where I could funnel the wire through a small opening. I settled on using a cherry dowel. I first cut a 5 8 inch hole down a little bit so the top of the bulb could fit in it. And here I cut a smaller hole all the way through. Now don't cut the small hole first, uh, because then the Forstner bit won't have anything to grip onto, and you'll have a really hard time cutting that larger hole, which I figured out through experience. <laughs> to ensure these little caps stayed on the bulb well, I went with epoxy, which honestly in my experience you simply cannot beat when it comes to glue. And uh, yeah, I just love the way these look. I think the wood really dress the bulbs up a bit and take them away from Christmas ornament territory into sleek mid-century modern looking territory almost, or something like that. Since I used cherry dowels, I figured I might as well continue with that look. And fittingly, it was snowing outside. I'm making two discs, one large and one smaller, that will go above the larger one. The large one measured about 15 inches in diameter, and the small one about 10. Now I'm going to separate the two discs with a couple of dowels. And the reason for this design is that the wires from the bulbs will funnel up through the larger disc. And I didn't want to mount that directly onto the ceiling. So then I figured I could add that second piece and create some room in between. Plus it would make it look like the large disc was almost floating. Now cutting spacious holes through the dowels because I'm going to be screwing through them to connect the two discs and I don't want them to crack. Also cutting holes in the larger disc for the wires coming up. And since I'm having five bulbs dangling down, 360 divided by five is 72 degrees. So that's how far apart they were spaced. Now each bulb will obviously need two wires, one positive and one negative, but to make it a little bit neater, I'm spinning the two wires together with a drill. And connected to the drill here, I have a piece of aluminum rod that I've drilled a hole through, and then just tying the wires together on it. And that works really well to spin with. Now the wires connected to the bulb spray painting black. And the longer one going down the wall, I'm spray painting white. Now to finish all the cherry, I'm using some basic de-wax shellac, so getting all the pieces covered here. So time to connect all the wires together. I'm soldering together all five negatives and all five positives, and connecting them with the wires which will connect to the switch and the power plug. Now this wire I'm using is 30 gauge. It is super thin and fine to work with, and I really wanted something thin because I think it looks neat with the bulbs hanging from the thin wire. Plus there's so little power going through these wires, so it's fine using such thin wire here. 
Next here, I'm funneling the wires through the holes and cutting them to length. And I wanted all the bulbs to be of slightly different heights. So just testing out here what might look good. And then once all the wires were through, I could connect each one with a fairy light strip. So the process here is to first confirm which wire in the fairy light strip is positive and which is negative, and then connect them accordingly. Oh, it works! So I needed something to house the PWM switch in, which you'll turn the lights on with and also dim them with. So I made this simple little wooden box here that also holds the switch, a female barrel plug that the power cord will plug into, then there are also the wires coming out on the other side, which will connect to the lights. Now most cell phone chargers don't actually come with a barrel plug. I'm using an old Roku power supply that does. But if you were using a power supply with a micro USB connection, you could just add that instead of a barrel plug. So to assemble the discs, I've got screws going through the small round, then through the dowels, and then screwing them into the big disc. I also drilled a hole in the center of both discs, which I'm lining them up with, and that's the screw that will actually connect the whole fixture to the ceiling. Then connecting the dimmer switch box to the lights wire, and finally placing each fairy light strip into each bulb, and I'm simply adding some hot glue to the end of the plug to keep the lights inside. Oh, and then just adjusting the heights of the bulbs slightly here by pulling the cord up and hot gluing it to the disc. Okay guys, so I'm up on a ladder here to be able to shoot this. Uh, so attach this to the ceiling here with the one screw into the rafter. And this is really solid on there. Um, also, I glued on the wire and all around. And uh, yeah, I think it looks quite nice, very light. Um, the strings like this worked out. Um, I really like the round shape and the fact that you have, I have this other disc here so it kind of is brought down a little bit so it almost feels like it's floating a little bit which I think is rather nice. Of course I also have the dimmer installed so you can bring it down. And I have this in August room right now but I also think this could be really nice as a chandelier over you know a, a dining table something like that would be really nice. Now, while we're admiring the beautiful light here, I wanted to take a moment and thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video and also supporting this channel. If you've been thinking about making your own website, perhaps to get that new business idea going, then you should head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash darbenorver to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Now, I think Squarespace is a great choice because they've got beautiful templates. If you want to run an e-commerce shop, then keeping track of inventory and fulfilling orders is a breeze. Plus, if you were to have any questions, you can take advantage of their 24-7 customer service. So definitely worth checking them out and get that new business idea off the ground. Also, make sure to take advantage of the 10% discount at squarespace.com slash darbenorber. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions about the build in the comments below and I'll see you soon. Bye. Oh yeah, almost forgot. I was curious how much energy this fixture actually is using. So I've got this little thing that you plug the power cord into and you can see how much energy is being drawn on an app. So depending on whether the lights are dimmed or not, they're using between 2.2 and 6.9 watts. So, not bad.